Wednesday, July 29th. It's 1.18 p.m. I'm, after 48 years, reporting my sexual assault from when I was 12. And I made the preliminary report, and it was assigned to a detective. And he called me yesterday in the middle of my workday. So um, I told him that I would call him back today. So I'm doing that now. And uh, I hope that this helps and inspires other people to make their reports because it's too scary for people to report their sexual assaults, so they just don't. <clears throat> um, okay. I need to record. Okay. Wednesday, July 29th, 1.20 p.m. This is my sexual assault rape report. <clears throat> Sergeant Wall. Here we go. Did you hear Sergeant Wall? Hi, Sergeant Wall. This is Jane Fendelman. You called me yesterday about my rape report, and I was in the middle of my workday. And do you have some time right now? Sure. Okay, so awesome. I just in the office, so good. I logged on my computer, so good timing. Oh, okay, perfect. Wonderful. Okay, so how do we start? Okay. Sorry, I had to, I'm old, so I have to put my old man glasses on. Oh, I can relate. So I can take some notes here. Um, so what I've been doing is uh, doing an in inquiry uh, into your report. Okay. But by that, what I mean is uh, checking with the statute of limitations. Okay. So there, there's a couple problems here. Um, so I would try to work all that out. So if you follow me, I think I could try to explain this for you. Okay. So um, unfortunately, this event happened in uh, 1972. Right. So you're 12, and the suspect, you don't mind if I call the suspect, do you? No, that's fine. Um, is 15. Okay. So, by state of Missouri statute, that means that even though it's being reported now, that this case would be prosecuted by the juvenile court right. in St. Louis County. Uh huh. So, um, which presents other issues. Okay. Right. So, um, the St. Louis County Family Court is under consent decree of the federal government, and uh, they won't take a 63-year-old man into the building. So, that's one issue that we have. Wait a minute. They wouldn't take him into the building because he's not a minor? Or because he's now, if he, old. If, if he was 21 or 22 years old, a little different. But uh, with the age factor, uh, that's a factor to them. So if he was 21 or 24, it would they would because why? He's a little closer to the uh, 18 age limit. Oh. So their rules, not mine. What is what age so, is their cutoff?
Okay. So usually across the country it's 18. Right. Uh, for an adult. Uh, but Missouri's changing that, I think, to, to make it more uh, consistent with every other state. Um, okay. But so, there is no statute of limitations for a, ch- a child sexual assault, right? No. And that was the other point I was uh, going to make. There is, in your case, so uh, several years ago, the state of Missouri made sexual assault, because yours would be uh, an attempt to forcible rape uh, and a forcible sodomy. That's how I coded it and classified it. Wait a minute. It was, so, why was it called an attempt forcible rape and sodomy because uh, that is it that's not what happened according to the police report that I have uh-huh. it says that uh, he tried to pull your pants down and insert his penis into your vagina uh, uh, you continue to struggle uh, then Scott Kimball uh, sat on your chest, put your arms down, uh, and then uh, Rick. his penis in your mouth and then ejaculated into your mouth. Oh, okay. That's... That's sodomy. I thought sodomy is um, anal sex. No. Okay. All right. So... Yeah, sodomy in the state of Missouri is anything other than vaginal sex. Oh, okay. Understood. Got it. Okay. So you were saying? So, a few years ago, they made uh, those certain crimes a Class A felony, which there is no statute of limitations on those. Okay. So if this would have happened in 2005, 2002, it would be a Class A felony and there is no statute of limitations. But because this happened in 72, it's not retroactive. So it means it can't go back. Uh, It only starts when they pass that law. Which was, I think, 2005, maybe 2006. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. So your crime, unfortunately, falls under the, uh, and there's a land term for it. uh, I, 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 I can't remember. Unfortunately, your crime falls under the old statute. Which was what? And that old statute says that you have, from the time that a person turns 18. From the time I do? Or they? From the time that you, the victim. The victim. Turns 18. Right. You have 30 years to report it. So I would have been 48. I only had until I was 48. Correct. Wow. Well, and here's what's, now I did learn this, and here's what makes matters worse. Is, uh, surprisingly, it's only 10 years for the civil, which I would think would be longer. What, what is civil? What's the difference between, is it the difference between a civil crime and a felony civil. crime? Or I don't know. No, a, a, a civil crime and a criminal crime. So a criminal crime is punishable by fine or jail, uh, fine or prison. Um, or civil, it, it, it's a civil lawsuit. Like OJ, they tur- they uh, civilly sued him for, I'm just using that because it's a famous case, uh, for the unlawful death of uh, Ron Goldman. Right. Okay, so... So you're say uh, So, I'm sorry, what, so what were you years. saying about that? Yeah, that's only a 10-year. It's only... You only have 10 years to report yeah. uh, what kind of to crime? Civilly sue, right. To civilly sue somebody for uh, a felony like that. A major felony. Uh, 
so I'm sorry, you only have 10 years to report what kind of rape? Or is that murder? To, to, I'm, I'm sorry. No, what? To, file a, to file a civil lawsuit for that is only 10 years. Oh, you mean to sue somebody for raping you? Correct. You only have 10 years from the time you're 18 or 10 years from the 10 time years. of the occurrence? 18. So you only, I would have only had to 28, right. age 28 for a civil suit. And I actually didn't even come out of denial about being raped until I was 30. So I would have... So, correct. So, which is why, eventually why the state of Missouri changed their laws. Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I tried to do something about this a number of years ago, but... I didn't know I was spelling the rapist's name wrong. And then last week, somebody randomly, so I thought he was dead, or I even called the Creve Corps police a couple of years ago, and a really nice cop there tried to help me find him and see if he was still alive or still there, and um he didn't find him either. I even had his high school, what high school he went to. I just had the last name spelled wrong. So, um, so a child, So how were you able to, to, to find this? Well, how'd I find him now? Yeah. So, um, I'm a therapist and I frequently post on Facebook. Um, you know, I'll, I'll post a conversation starter and ask people how they feel about something or uh, just something pertinent to the times. And uh, I, uh, I guess it was a week ago Wednesday, and I put this post up saying, uh, how old, ask, wait, here's how it started. Want to have your mind blown? Ask any woman you know how old she was the first time a man did or said something sexually inappropriate to her. And it ended up with about 160 uh, posts in the thread. And it went from age three to like age 13. Like the medium age was probably 10 or nine, eight or nine or 10 or something like that. And I posted my, my first uh, sexual assault was when I was molested by a carny at Creve Corps Days who uh, lifted me off the merry-go-round, lifted me off the horse by slipping his hands under my armpits and putting his hands on my breasts. I was 10. I had just started developing and lifted me off the horse uh, and, you know, molested me. As he was lifting me off the horse in front of my mother, who it didn't even register with her, I don't know if she was looking. And um, then the next time I could remember was when I was 12 and this guy, the rapist, and two of his buddies took me to the neighborhood pedophile who um, gave me drugs. And when I started nodding off, the pedophile molested me. He got his hands up my shirt and I pushed him off of me and ran out through the park there, Beaujardin Park and these guys tried to catch me on the bridge there. There used to be a bridge there over this little gully. She said this was the second one? Yeah, the first time was when I was molested by a carny at Creep Corps Days. Right. So this is the second time I can remember being sexually assaulted was when I was 12. And um, I got away from the guys, these guys I bit and kicked and was running up the hill. I was almost to the road, Schulte Road or Schutz Road. I can't remember what it's called. And yeah, and the rapist knocked me down from behind. He knocked the wind out of me. And while my lungs were still burning, gasping for air, I fought him for my clothing. And then that's when he tried to rape me vaginally. But, you know, I was 12. And he was, in essence, raping me vaginally, vaginally. But um, he was screaming in my face to relax. So um, 
after what seemed like a lifetime, he gave up and raped me orally. And that was what happened. And it fucked up my life for years. I completely shut off. I was shut off from my friends and my family and I couldn't talk about it and nobody knew what happened to me. And my family just thought I turned into a bad kid. And so my father wouldn't come around anymore because my little brothers lived with him. And um, I got into drugs and alcohol and they wouldn't really bring my little brothers around or see me because they thought I would be a bad influence. And they just thought I was this bad kid. And my grades went to D's and F's and that went on for years. Like I barely graduated when I got my undergrad degree. And then I kind of limped along through life, not even realizing what was wrong with me, never told a soul. And then uh, when my life was just rock bottom, I found a counselor. I had just turned 30. I had quit my job. I had just gotten divorced. Everything in my life was shit. And that's when she helped me realize I just thought my first sexual experience was unpleasant and I didn't really want to do it. And it was extremely painful. And my counselor said, oh, you were raped. And I was like, what? No. And she goes, no, that's rape. <laughs> and I was like, what? And that was when I was 30. And then it took years, you know, a few years just to start to heal from that realization. And then I became a therapist and then I just started helping all these other people. And I don't know why nobody along the line said to me, let's report your rapist, <laughs> you know, cause that's what a therapist or fa friends or family members are supposed to say to you. But I think everybody, well, my family especially just wanted me to shut up about it and move on. You know, they were all like, that was a long time ago. You need to let that go. Aren't you over that yet? But it doesn't and being able to report the assault and get help from the police or somebody is a big part of it but it seems like um people can't get the help like when i managed to get a client to be courageous enough to um report their rape or their incest or their molestation um, there's so many obstacles to doing that. It's just, um, you're really great, but a lot of times the cops are not compassionate or they're actually mean or they're blaming or the friends and family of the victim are blaming, they're slut shaming, they're not believing you, they're telling you get over it, it's not a big deal. So um, I, I heard there was no statute of limitations in St. Louis and so I was really, like all of a sudden someone found this guy and said, is this the guy? And I was like, that's the guy. And uh, then I thought St. Louis has no statute of limitations for reporting, but apparently, apparently yes. it's too bad I got raped when I was so young. Otherwise I would be able to report this guy. Yeah, um, yeah unfortunately, yeah, you're, you're a victim of like the time of like the 70s. So you got like double victimized here. I mean, your experience, what you're explaining to me, is um, you hit all the markers of a true victim. Drugs, alcohol, uh, a touch of, uh, almost like an onset of a touch of deficit disorder, uh, 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 a, a depression kind of thing. And, um, oh, I was yeah, suicidal uh, through, right. off and on throughout my whole childhood. Yeah. Well, I mean, at first I did. At first I was just terrified. I was terrified of men and frigid. Yeah. And then I became, then when I got, the older I got and the more into drugs and alcohol I got, the more predatory I became. And then I became just like a shark. I would just like hit a man and just, devastate him and then leave him just using them and it 
Uh, and then finally, I think when I got into college, I became more conscious of what I was doing. But, um, God, I, don't, I, I live in Arizona. Like, we really need to get these laws changed, and they need to be retroactive. Right. right. Well, they're changed now. They're not going to make them retroactive, unfortunately. Why? Um, oh, I don't know, because uh, I'm just a truth teller, man. I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I'm, I'm never going to lie to you. I'm not a politician. Uh, I mean, I've been, I've been doing this job for 31 years, so just to let you know who I am. So I run... Uh, for the St. Louis County Police Department, uh, there are two squads that are uh, sex crimes, robbery, and homicide. So I'm the boss of one of those squads. So, you know, and, uh, like right, right now, here, murders are crazy. Um, so I'm glad you called me last night because uh, about 40 minutes after we talked, I was out on a murder. Uh, for about five hours, so well, we should call. Um, but yeah, these politicians uh, make some of these laws uh, and they don't think about the repercussions. The laws are made by men who were never raped. I mean, I really feel like rape is a kind of soul murder. It like murders the spirit. Yeah, we get a lot of, uh, we get more, uh, it's becoming more and more common to get men who are sexually assaulted to report these crimes. Well, maybe more men, I mean, it was probably always common. It's just maybe men are more brave about reporting it now since women are speaking out more since the Me Too oh, movement. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. <coughs> Anybody else maybe reported on this guy so at least it could help no, somebody who was I raped after me? Uh, I did that. Um, no reports uh, of, of him in St. Louis County. There's, uh, unfortunately, when did you leave here? I left there as soon as I could. Like, even oh, before I walked for a high school graduation. So it was like, um, I, like, uh, let me see, I'm 60, so I was like... So you graduated like 80? No, 78. Yeah, 78. Okay. And from where? Uh, from where? Oh, uh, from uh, Ledoux High, Horton Watkins. Le oh, well, look at you. <laughs> but, uh, we lived on the poor street in Ledoux. We lived on the street uh, with the right. teachers and principals. <laughs> it was a fancy you. high school. I felt weird I there. Graduated from Rittner, trust me. Uh, what? Rittner. I graduated from Rittner, so I upgraded from East City to Rittner, so. Uh, oh. Which my is terrible, uh, my brother lives in U City. My brother and his family. Well, there's parts real nice, and we didn't live in that part. Uh -huh. um, so, but I guess what I was the, re the only reason I was asking was that. Uh, there are, I think, 66 little police departments within St. Louis County. Mm -hmm. It's like Overland, Ladue has their own police department, Clayton has their own, uh, Flora said, if you remember some of these, Kirkwood. Anyway, yeah. um, so some of those I cannot check for. Um, so I ran him for a criminal history. 
Okay. And he had no criminal history uh, of uh, anything sexual in nature. Oh, but he probably had a lot of other stuff. He had a couple other things. Um, I don't remember off my hand, but it was nothing serious enough to catch my eye. Um, I mean, I can't imagine taking a little twelve-year-old little girl to a pedophile to be drugged and molested, and then that didn't work. So, oh, let's rape her, huh? Right. Well, no. With your report, I would think that uh, that's why I wanted to check to see if there were more of these. Or do you guys have anything on? I I didn't know this pedophile's real name. He lived in Beaujardine Park, and his name was Twinks. No, ma'am. Hmm. I mean, he uh, was a bona fide pedophile. And uh, if I ran, I ran, tw- I ran twink uh, in, in my uh, nickname system, and uh, I, I get like a ton, uh, and most of them uh, are African American males. I feel like, you know what? I read something the other day, last week, about. Um, that drug dealers actually get longer sentences than rapists <laughs> and people want to buy drugs people people don't want to be raped so it seems like somehow in our culture in our society maybe in our entire world that rape is just not that big of a deal but well, I, I can tell you not here in the state of Missouri because they made that a class A felony but it just seems like they should make that retroactive. So it's like, oh, sorry, you were too young when you got raped. So you're shit out of luck. You know what I mean? Yeah, kind of. It's, oh, it's, I can see how you, you would say that. Um, but I mean, it's on the same level as murder here now. So uh, what we do, uh, we just uh, uh, grab the serial rapist two weeks ago. Uh, That's good. Congratulations. This guy's he's going to go to prison for life. So uh, good. They, they don't get probation here. You shoot somebody, you, you can get probation here. Yeah. Uh, but sex crimes here in St. Louis County, uh, we have a progressive prosecutor, uh, and, and he goes after him hard. God. Okay. Well, thank you for talking with me. So. Uh, well, I'm sorry, because I, I usually like to deliver good news. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. Um, but I, I will say this, uh, if, if you don't mind, and I, I don't want this to come across as patronizing or anything. Uh, it, it's incredible uh, that you were able to, uh, through your therapist when you were 30, mm-hmm. uh, who helped you recognize, and now, obviously, gone through your battles, but you have come out way ahead, and it sounds like to me that you're helping people, which is yeah. uh, an amazing thing. So uh, congratulations to you for at least, uh, and uh, I'm a military veteran, and like I said, I've been doing this for 31 years, and, uh, I'm hopefully done some because I'm tired of getting shot at, um, hmm. but uh, for helping out. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I, on, you know, the human level and the more maternal level, I, my heart is aching right now for the little girl that I was who never got supported and never got to like have her day in court and get justice. But the, uh, therapist part of me can see how I took uh, the most horrific moment in my life and turned it into my gift that blesses so many other people. And the spiritual part of me can see how I went through exactly everything that I needed to go through to rise up to the level that I have. So I I can see it from many different directions. And I hope that me trying to report this 
gives other people the courage to try to report and that they can hear that not all cops are unfeeling and callous and like there's cops like you who have a heart and have compassion and um, that the reporting may not always go the way that you want it to, but we still have to try because the more people who don't report, the more these lawmakers can't see what a huge problem this is. And the, the longer it'll take to get those laws changed. Well, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and I, I won't brag on my department for, for a minute, if you don't mind. Um, if, if, you were, if you were 12 now, reported this you would not tell your story to a policeman oh or you wouldn't even tell it to a policewoman um, you would take you uh, to a place here the, the child the child advocacy center uh -huh. and and he would uh, detail your whole incident uh, to a, a licensed clinical social worker who's trained in this it's that's really crazy. great that's really great, but so you don't go to court, you don't. So Sergeant to trial. Sergeant Wall, they need something like that for adult women too, because they treat children with more care here too in Arizona and most states. You know, there's a child advocacy center here called Child Help, and there's sex special sex crimes unit, and there's female cops, and they call in female counselors or you know uh depending what the child needs and um but for adult women and men um reporting a sexual assault is still a horrific experience here in arizona i've had i can't tell you how many clients who finally got the courage to make the report and then they called in and the initial cop who took the report wasn't qualified wasn't compassionate and either dropped the ball and didn't follow up or uh just was downright mean. I actually just had a client just a few months ago who was working in Old Town Scottsdale and um, when she got off shift she was um, being uh, flirted with by this guy who drugged her and raped her with his roommate and robbed her in their fancy Scottsdale apartment and she was coming to and grabbed her purse and phone and went into the bathroom and was confused and called 911 and said, I think I was robbed. And she was confused about, did I consent to sex with two guys? Like she was confused because she had a drink with them, but she woke up later and she didn't know. And when the cops came, a male cop and a female cop, and the male cop interviewed these two men, these young wealthy men and the female cop interviewed my client who's a good good person who i've known for about four years who is not a prostitute and um these dudes were so scared and the cop didn't search the guys they would have found the whatever it was rohypnol or whatever to drug her with and they would have found her money they took all her tip money and uh they had exactly the amount of money but they weren't searched they had her cash and um, the cops called her outside and this is at 1 a.m. and she seems drunk to the cops and she even said to the cops um, they robbed me and I think they maybe gave me something and instead of listening to the women woman the cop said the guy cop was just horrific to her and he said you either walk away or you go to jail with us right now because these guys said you solicited them for sex for money and she was so terrified she went away after being drugged and raped and robbed by two men in scottsdale so these cops just blew it so with her permission i called up the supervisor at scottsdale pd and i just i read him the riot act and you could imagine they backpedaled and the cop got a reprimand. I guess he's still out there, though. But I that story is not unusual. I my clients tell me stories like that, ha, things like that happening with cops 
all the time. I, I think Missouri's better. I think St. Louis especially is better. But, I mean, it, there needs to be something more universal kind of training for cops to handle sexual assault. And also, not too many kids will disclose their sexual assault. So it's great that it's better for kids. It's just not much better for adults. Yeah, I'm trying to be a little more gentle here. So, like, uh, on something that's like the late, say she would have left and went home and then called, which is more so what happens. Um, so, uh, officers on the street can call me, you know, or my partner 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's just part of the job. Yeah. So, I just answer the phone uh, to give direction on that. And then, uh, but a lot of times I won't send my officers to the hospital. And, right. Uh, sexual assault, assault kit is extremely invasive. Yeah, so, they, and they have uh, to have specific training. We, so what I do is is uh, let the victim go home uh, uh, and, and sleep and, and and just try to relax and, and do whatever, and then I'll have a detective reach out uh, a day or two later, uh, set up a time, uh, and then uh, go from there. So. That way you don't traumatize them. That's really good. Eight hours for one day. So. You know, the secondary trauma is the worst. Like, m my rape and molestation was bad enough. It, it was horrific, in fact. Horrific. I, I tore, I bled. Um, it was horrific. I was banged up all over because there was a big fight for my clothing. And... Um, but the secondary trauma, the being scared to tell my mom because she would yell at me or hit me or I did something bad, um, feeling like there was something wrong with me. I was bad and wrong, and that's why this boy did this to me. Um, then turning into a bad kid and having everybody reinforce it. I mean, this destroyed my childhood, this one event. And... I wouldn't have told anybody. There was nobody, no teacher, no principal, nobody at my school who said, hey, you were like a really nice, happy little outgoing kid a minute ago. Did something happen? Nobody asked me that. And then I turned into a young woman and still nobody asked. And then when it did finally come out when I was 30, nobody said, you know what? Let's call the police in St. Louis. Let's report this. And, um, and now I finally, I don't know why I didn't think I could report him because I didn't, I thought he was dead or gone or in the wind or something. Right. But I had his name wrong. Anyway. You can't blame yourself. You cannot blame yourself for any of that. Well, thank you. I just, I wish this, there was a more universal system where victims could have an attack, a sexual assault, and then reach out and have somebody like you respond. And it, what you're doing there in St. Louis is great. It just isn't universal with police, and it needs to be universal. Well, no, I appreciate that. We try. We, we you know, uh, we're here for, for, uh, for, for people, for our community, so. Thank you. Uh, it always makes you feel good when you, when you do right by somebody, that's for sure. Yes. So, well, but unfortunately, like I said, I, I hate to deliver bad news, but um, I do appreciate you not screaming at me. Because <laughs> huh. um, it's hard to take, uh, and, it, and it's emotional, um, I know. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. But, um, you have my phone number. Um, I switch shifts. Every, uh, I have a nomadic lifestyle in here. Um, especially mostly because of homicides. Huh. Um, so, uh, but you have my number with any other questions. Uh, okay. Come to mind or, I wish uh, the laws in Arizona were like the Missouri laws because here you have something like, you have like a few years after you turn 18. I can't remember what it is because it just changed to longer. But it's not as long as St. Louis, I don't think. But anyway, thank you for everything you do, and yes, thank you for talking with me. All right. Well, thank you again. And then, uh, like I said, if you need anything, just give me a holler. Okay. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.
Thank you guys for your messages, Liz and Lisa. And Sandra, thank you guys. So I really had a lot of hope because there's no statute of limitations for sexual abuse, child sexual abuse. I don't know about when you're an adult in Missouri. And I don't know if you guys were logged on when he said um, that rape was considered on par with murder. So rape has the same weight in Missouri as murder does. <clears throat> you know what was really neat was um, my family is not really um, supportive in this area. I don't even talk to them about it because back when I was 30 and came out of denial and tried to talk about it, I got told to let it go, you know, to kind of shut up and let it go. Oh, you're welcome, Angela. And so um, I knew not to try to go to my family for support. And um, I did let my mom know whatever it was last week. Thank you, Lisa that uh, I'd been spelling the rapist's name wrong and that somebody found him and that I was going to make a police report. And my mom said something. Uh, she texted back something supportive. She just said, um, I'm with you 100% and I support you. And I said, wow, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And... Um, then I contacted a couple of friends in St. Louis who went to high school with this guy. And that was a really neat experience too because they said, let me know what I can do to support you. Is there anything I can do? And that just felt amazing. Um, there's three brothers that I know in the, all in the same family. And um, one especially was like a big brother to me, Perry. <laughs> Perry Jacobs and uh, Danny Jacobs and Mitch Jacobs, who's a lawyer. And they all said, I'm here for you. And that was really wonderful. And uh, one of my girlfriends here in Arizona said, if there's a trial, I'll go with you to St. Louis and sit by you. And I was like, wow. And just uh, so much support came out. And then also randomly, a couple of Facebook friends said, why are you going to report this so long after? What if you disturb the life of the rapist? And one of them, I mean, they didn't put it like that. And one of them said, you know, your uh, youth is going to come up. Your reputation is going to come under question. And I was like, I really don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care if they say I fucked every guy in high school, which I didn't. Um, I said, I don't care about that. I mean, that's one of the reasons why women don't report. They're slut shamed or somehow it's your fault or you were a bad person. So you deserved it. But I was 12 then. I was 12. I turned dark after I got raped. I turned very, very dark. And it took me years to climb out of that pit. So the St. Louis police are really good. Anyway, that story I told about the client who a few months ago was drugged and raped by two guys who lived in Old Town Scottsdale, that, that fucked me up. I had, had to tell her, I'm having counter transference, like it made me mad. It made me really mad and upset that she got sexually assaulted like that and that the cops handled it the way they did. That's called secondary trauma, what the cops did. You know, you get fucked up from the sexual assault and then you get fucked up more from how 
from your family shutting you down or your friends slut shaming you or the cops not helping you and telling you it's your fault that's called secondary trauma and that's the main reason people don't report And then not reporting it and carrying it around for years. Oh, and by the way, just don't try and talk to people who tell you to get over it. Or you might bother the rapist's wife. He might have a wife and children. And, you know, what if they heard about it? And it's like, really? I was stoned and drunk for 18 years after I got raped. What about that? And also, there's, there's a spiritual journey for every person. And you don't know, they don't know, maybe the spiritual journey of the rapist includes being reported on. Maybe that's part of his path, is, you know, having a real world experience of being held accountable and taken to court and maybe having a um, punishment doled out um, to exact justice. Oh God, now I'm just tired. <laughs> I gotta eat. And then I go into session for the afternoon, which I'm really grateful for. Being a counselor has been my saving grace because it is my passion and my calling and every moment that I'm in session, I'm present with my clients and I'm not thinking about myself, anything about me at all. So I really want to thank you guys for being on this call with me. It made me feel not so alone. And that was a good cop and it seems like that's a rarity when it comes to reporting a sexual assault. I've heard so many bad stories and I've been on so many calls with bad cops trying to support my client and help my client report their sexual assault. So thank you guys for being with me. I love you guys.